what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again thank you very much for seeing all my videos and subscribing to them and today we will begin with the video on navratri the most auspicious festival in india is going on now the festival of the nine nights culminating in the killing of the demon mahishasur by goddess durga herself basically what navratri is i will not go into the details of navratri festival like we all know there are different times when goddess durga had incarnated in this universe and in our planet and to teach us different lessons for example the first incarnation she had taken was of brahmacharini i guess and then there are different other shalya putri and ending in mahagauri which we say yes and goddess durga is actually wife of lord shiva but we will not discuss about the nine different ladies and what they did that most of us already know but if you do not know and you want me to make a video on them then please comment in the comment section below so that i can understand what you want because as i said i will only make what you want me to make yes now what i want to stress here today is not on navratri function because this is only going to be for 9 days and today is the third day i guess already two days are over but i want to speak on something which is beyond the realm of these 9 days which is valid for 365 days for 24 hours and 7 days a week that is the importance of the feminine energy or the feminine aspect of god because we have all the experience in our homes that whenever a child does something naughty he does some prank or he gets bad marks in his exams he always runs to his mother because the father can come and beat him or yell at him or shout at him or uh, rip him apart completely <laughs> but he will go and hide in the lap of his mother he or she and then he is saved by that to some extent <laughs> because the mother's nature is she is very soft and loving and caring and she doesn't allow the father to harass the child although even if that harassment is for the good of the child otherwise the child will not learn yes therefore we should not blame somebody who is being strict or somebody who is showing discipline or somebody somebody who is punishing the child because that is the way it is supposed to happen even in the vedic context the gurus were there but sometimes the child is extremely naughty naughty means he has done so many nefarious activities which the father is now disgusted with <laughs> and that is our situation in this kaliyuga because the vedic scriptures tell us that kaliyuga is the fourth of the yuga cycles starting from satyuga dwapar yuga treta yuga and then kaliyuga dwa is 2 and tre is 3 and kaliyuga is the fourth that means kaliyuga people are all considered to be backbenchers which means they could not obtain spiritual perfection and they were entangled in their materialistic desires because of which they have taken birth and because of which there is so much suffering in this age of kali kaliyuga is characterized by two things quarrel and hypocrisy the shrimad bhagavatam which is one of the crest jewels of the vedic tradition like the other books like the ramayana the mahabharat etc tells us that in kaliyuga the only two things that is prominent is quarrel you will see everywhere people are quarreling and then the second one is hypocrisy hypocrisy means duplicity double minded behavior double minded statements double meaning actions what you think what you speak and what you do is not in harmony let me repeat what you think what you want what you do 
nothing is in harmony there's mismatch everywhere what you think what you say should be in one line and then what you say you should also do but then it doesn't happen that way these days yes that is the predicament of people in kali yuga because of which kali yuga people are known as backbenchers backbenchers means they like in a classroom sometimes people will be uh, sitting in the front bench the first bench the serious people the sincere yes the students but the people who are not sincere who are not interested in studying they will go and hover around at the last bench they will be just talking wasting and chit chatting yeah. wasting their valuable time like most of us have done right including me <laughs> unfortunately well those are some memories also of our school days let's cherish them but when it comes to following of the principles that lead us to spiritual perfection nonetheless to say that we have missed so many chances because the very fact that we are here in this kali yuga proves that there has been many many opportunities which have been missed by us to reach god otherwise we would have been there with him we would not be here in this mortal world that means our condition is like that child who is very nefarious who is very naughty who is who thinks he is he is very cunning but actually he is not he is actually destroying himself by doing wrong activities so in that case when we approach god who is the father directly <laughs> when i say father i mean ram or krishna or shiva or ganesh the masculine part and then the father may be angry with us because we have always been doing wrong activities from our childhood we have also done good activities but so many wrong activities we have done and in earlier lifetimes also because of which the father may feel i i do not want to see this person lord shiva might open his third eye and he will burn you completely <laughs> or lord vishnu may use his sudarshan chakra and rip your head apart of course they will not do it directly but they may do it through their agents like this nature and other people therefore it is the utmost need in today's society in this kali yuga that we take the shelter of the divine mother yes who is the divine mother divine mother is parvati lakshmi saraswati these are our mothers such is the wife of indra because whenever the mother will request the father then the father will not deny i have understood here <laughs> that means in the festival of navratri apart from the past time which had been performed by goddess durga if we exclusively pray to her that i am suffering in this material world devoid of divine knowledge spiritual knowledge entangled in this material realm and my father is not listening to me <laughs> when i say not listening i do not mean he is not fulfilling my desires i simply mean to say that the ultimate goal that any person should be aspiring for his spiritual perfection because that is a point of no return because lord krishna says in the bhagavad gita that yad gatvana nivartante tad dhama paramam mama yad gatvana nivartante tad dhama paramam mama yad gatvana nivartante means one who goes there to my abode tad dhama paramam mama it's the opposite because in sanskrit the order is opposite so which means that krishna is telling yad gatva nani vartante he does not return tad dhama param mama param dham who has gone back to the param dham to the spiritual world to vaikunt he doesn't return back to this world and this i am not saying lord krishna is saying in the gita but the predicament of the people of kali yuga is they are not interested in spiritual advancement they are only interested in mundane materialistic affairs which is not wrong but 
there should be spiritual inquiry because the Vedanta Sutra, which is the name itself, Veda Anta means end of the Vedas. The Vedanta Sutra says, Athato Brahma Jigyasa. Therefore, you inquire about spiritual life. Therefore, you inquire about God, which goes to tell us that as human beings who are blessed with higher intelligence and bestowed with more power and more ability to understand how this world functions, we should be inquiring what we are doing here, who are we, what are we supposed to do, are we these bodies, are we just the employee which is there in the ID card or are we the person who whose photo is there in the passport, is, is it only that or do we feel that we are somebody else, we are souls actually, Gita says. Every living entity is a soul, part and parcel of God. Therefore, on these nine days, divine nine nights, see, nine planets, nine nights of Navaratri, yes. <laughs> we should desperately pray to Goddess Durga and all the other nine incarnations that please, 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 arrange my life in such a way that I can look to God in every instance of my life and I can also aspire for spiritual perfection. Spiritual perfection will only come if you aspire for it. If you are not aspiring for it at all, how will it come? If you do not aspire to get a job, how will you get a job? Because then you won't apply. But to aspire something, you have to know what is the value of that thing. Otherwise, you cannot even aspire. So it goes first, you know the value of something, then you aspire for it. And then you take steps, mini steps towards that. And then finally, you reach the goal. That is how everything happens in this world. Which means to reach spiritual perfection, you have to take steps towards it for which you have to aspire and for aspiring you have to know how great that thing is and how will you know how great that is by reading the timeless wisdom of the scriptures by associating with people who are followers of the scriptures and word by word and by gaining experience from them and learning from them on how to approach God and how to reach perfection. And therefore, I would request everybody watching this video that in these nine days of Navaratri, we can pray to the Divine Mother. Whoever we are inspired by, either it is Parvati or, or even if you are a Christian, then you can pray to the uh, females who are there in your tradition. For example, Mary. Yes. You can pray to her. And there are so many, so many divine other um, female saints. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I do not know their names. It's very unfortunate I do not know their names. But you can always pray to them. Or if even if you are a Muslim watching this video, then there will be divine ladies in your tradition. You can pray to them because when they will pray for you, then God will definitely listen. Because God will not reject the prayer of those who are close to him and Lord Shiva is always with Parvati, Lord Krishna is always with Radha or with Rukmini, yes, or with Satyabhama <laughs> or with Jambati, yes, there you see. So when we pray to the Divine Mother and mothers are more merciful in nature, they are more accommodating in nature because the watery element is very high, they understand us more. Yes, that is why when we pray to them, they will understand our predicament and then they will request our father <laughs> that my dear sir, my dear God, my dear husband, whoever you are, please accept this person. This person has sincerely come to you and now please accept him and when they will request God, he cannot deny 
how can Lord Vishnu deny something which Lakshmi ji requests him? That's not possible, right? Even in this mundane world, you see, whenever a wife will say something, that's like the end of it all. The husband has to do it obediently, faithfully as a loyal servant. He has no option to say no. If he says no, that's it. <laughs> he will come to know what is the meaning of malefic planets in astrology. <laughs> He will so much understand what is the meaning of benefic and malefic planet. Well, jokes apart. That means now is a great time to pray to the feminine divine potency of God that please bestow divine wisdom or at least please bestow the aspiration that I want to go towards the higher wisdom apart from all the material responsibilities that we have. Okay. So that is it from my side. If you have any questions, queries and comments, then please let me know in the comment section. Or if you have not subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you like this video, then click the like button, thumbs up and share it with everybody who is celebrating the festival of Navratri. And also it is a great time to do spiritual activities, donations and especially charity and fasting especially. That is it from my side. Wish you good luck. Pray to mother. Yes. Bye-bye. See you.